There are so many ways to think outside of the box just a little bit and to get creative with those more baseline marketing tactics that are social media, email, and content marketing, likely things that you're already doing. Hey, my name is Jenna Kutcher, and I am obsessed with all things business, marketing numbers, and helping you to navigate both the messy and the magical seasons of this thing called life. I'm a small town mama who took a $300 camera, grew a successful photo biz, and now I work from home and run a seven figure online business. I teach you the tried and true secrets to building a career you adore. Shy away from the real talk? (laughs) No way. Money, hardship, growth, loss, and marketing are all topics we discuss here. Think of this as your one stop shop for happy hour with a gal pal mixed with business school. Pull up a seat, make sure you're cozy, and get ready to be challenged and encouraged while you learn. This is the Gold Digger Podcast. So much of marketing strategy is not about reinventing the wheel. For the most part, you don't need to go fancy or extreme or out there. The basics are often long-standing and super effective, and honestly, they're a great launching point. It's kind of like working out. While there's always going to be a new program or format to try, the basics are usually all you need to get the job done or to simply get started. Squats, push-ups, lunges, crunches, cardio, those are all the basic building blocks of working out that you can modify or build onto to amplify your workouts, but still keep them really straightforward while getting results, right? So if you think about it, like something like Peloton comes into the picture, makes the basics so much more exciting and enticing to people, including myself, and at its core, it still offers pretty basic workouts consisting of cardio on the bike or tread, plus additional options for strength, yoga, bar, or other methods of movement. But their unique format and instructors are what make it even more engaging for users. Now, trust me, I am not a fitness expert by any means, but as someone who enjoys moving my body for the sake of mental clarity and health and just overall well-being, I realize the importance of finding movement that fits for your schedule and your preferences. So before I go on a Peloton rant, because it's way too easy to do, let me explain what this has to do with today's topic. Sometimes it's not about something crazy or new or trendy. Most of the time, it's going back to the basics. For marketing, the basics for many entrepreneurs are social media marketing, email marketing, and content marketing. The thing that makes those pieces work isn't just serving in the form of those mediums every once in a while or when you have something to sell. It's committing to doing it consistently, just like the basics of exercise. And then... Every so often, a peloton of marketing will come in, something that's a little shinier and maybe more exciting in some ways than those basics. It's not that it works better than the basics of marketing. It's just different and new, which is also valuable in the marketplace because people appreciate and are enticed by different and new. Now, I promise this episode is not sponsored by Peloton, although I do love me a good hip hop ride with my girl, Allie Love. But my point is, it's important to consistently incorporate the basics of marketing in your strategy. And it's also important to learn about different marketing tactics that might not be your normal go to's and to experiment with them as you go. Sometimes a new marketing approach might be just what you need, working in tandem with the basics to really amplify your reach and take your marketing efforts to the next level. So today I want to share with you four of my all-time favorite uncommon marketing tactics that truly do work, especially alongside of the classics. These aren't our typical email list or social media tips and tricks, and while we absolutely value and love and need those pieces, These approaches can work side by side with the basics to make those conversions, the engagement, and the growth even more impactful. All right, let's dive on in. Thanks to Miro for supporting Gold Digger. Miro is a collaborative whiteboarding online platform created to help people visualize, discuss, and share work. Just like the whiteboard that hangs in your office, consider Miro a blank slate where you and your team or friends can all work, play, or something in between. Go to Miro, that's M-I-R-O dot com slash gold digger to start your free account. Thank you to Gravy for supporting Gold Digger. Gravy offers a failed payment recovery service for subscription or membership-based businesses to recover the relationship and your revenue. Get a free revenue consultation and 25% off your first month of their signature service at jennalovesgravy.com. First, let's talk about one of my favorite ways to engage and serve new visitors on my website, online quizzes. 
So I created my signature quiz, the what's your secret sauce quiz a few years ago. And it is one of my favorite ways to not only generate new leads and add to my email list, but to serve people and connect them with the content that they need the most just by answering a few questions. The benefit for me is that I can capture new and interested subscribers email addresses so that I can start serving them and chatting them up in their inboxes and building our relationship in a space that's less intense and more intimate than social media. The benefit for them is that they can take a quick, fun and engaging quiz that lets them know what sets them apart and that connects them to the top free content I have based on their specific results with just one simple click. And it gives them tangible tips inside their results to build more impactful business using their unique gifts. If you want to check out the secret sauce quiz just to see how it works and what your results are, head to secretsaucequiz.com. It is literally one of my favorite things that I've ever created. Now, here's the thing about quizzes. They're a win-win all the way around, which is what you want in an online quiz. By the way, according to lead quizzes, the average online quiz has a 31.6 lead capture rate. That means for every 100 people who visit your site, you could capture roughly 31 of their email addresses to add to your list using a quiz. That's like a crazy impressive number. Plus, they also shared that 79% of marketers say that interactive content like quizzes results in repeat visitors and multiplied exposure for your website. So not only are you increasing your leads, but you're also boosting your website traffic. Now, the thing is, as humans, let's be honest, we're all yearning to learn more about ourselves from our desires to our personality type to our ideal hobbies. Maybe it's our success style and preferred mode of learning and communicating. I was literally getting my eyebrows waxed yesterday. And the person who waxes my eyebrows was like, have you heard about this personality test? And we started talking about all of these things. And it's funny because it's like, why do you think these personality assessments like the Enneagram and the Myers-Briggs are so popular? Like when we have this opportunity to understand ourselves a bit better, it helps us to feel like we're finding our place in the world and we have more clarity around us and why we are the way we are and the decisions we make. And now while we all want to dive deep into who we are and the root of why we are the way we are, that doesn't mean that your quiz has to do that. I mean, how many of you have taken BuzzFeed's like, which flavor of ice cream are you quiz or wanted to know which character you'd be on Friends? Like, There's no way your quiz needs to be or should be as conclusive or serious as the Enneagram. Leave that to the psychology and sociology experts. But you can still give some wanted insight to your target audience through a quiz. And odds are that they're going to be excited about what their results have to say. When it comes to online quizzes, the aim is to keep it super fun, informative, and straightforward. Deliver value in the results and make sure that you're serving from the very beginning. When first creating a quiz, it helps to start with the results and build your quiz questions from there. I recommend having three to four different results that are based off of the customers or clients that you serve. So for example, let's just say you're a cake baker. Your quiz could be what style of cake fits you best. And the results could be an assortment like German chocolate cake, carrot cake, cheesecake, or vanilla cake. Then you could build the questions around those results. Prompts like, what kind of flavors do you prefer? With the selection being, you know, A, rich, lavish, and chocolatey, and that could lead to the German chocolate cake. Or B, coconutty, moist, and not too sweet for the carrot cake. Or C, savory, creamy, and sometimes fruity for cheesecake. Or D, simple, sweet, and vanilla for the vanilla cake. And another question could be like, which frosting do you like? And it could be chocolate, cream cheese, no frosting, or vanilla frosting. That's just one super simple example of types of questions to include in your quiz. And now I totally want some carrot cake. But I want for you to think about how you can come up with questions that will point to the specific result that you've decided on. Now, your quiz shouldn't be long. I'd say max 10 questions. People usually prefer for these types of interactive quizzes to only take a minute or two. And when you write the results, make sure you give a little insight into what each result means for a person and then include a call to action for what they can do next, whether it's buying that cake from you for their next occasion or getting your best recipe, or maybe it's reaching out for a consult call if you're a coach or a service provider, or it could be following you on social media for more advice advice on a certain topic that you cover. 
There are so many fun and creative directions you can take quizzes, and it's one of the best ways out there to grow your email list. Now, there are tons and tons of platforms available to host your quiz, but two that I know of and recommend are Interact and Typeform. Interact is the one that we use for our quizzes, and you can go to jennalovesinteract.com and check it out and see if it's the right fit for you. And the cool thing is, is that they've created so many different templates and have so many tutorials to walk you through creating a super epic quiz that it's pretty much foolproof. The second uncommon marketing tactic that we love over here at Team JK are pop-ups. Now, I know what you might be thinking, but yes, pop-ups like the kind on your website or blog, and no, they're not just some annoying box that no one reads as they search for the exit button. But the key to a great pop-up isn't just slapping one on your landing page and just letting it run takes a little bit of strategy and thought to make a high converting pop-up. Now, we actually focus on our pop-ups on a weekly basis because they move the needle that much. So anytime we have a launch or a buzzworthy announcement, we create new pop-ups that point to that invitation or promotion. The elements that we always, always include are a captivating image or graphic, a short and punchy headline, a brief but descriptive line or paragraph to explain the value of what we're offering, and a button to learn more that uses strong action words to encourage people to click on it, which can then take them to another landing page, a sales page, or an opt-in form. So we use and love Optin Monster for our pop-ups because they allow you to completely customize and design your pop-ups to fit your branding, which you know I love. And I went ahead and pulled some of our numbers from January through the end of May of 2021. And I want to share because it's pretty amazing what our pop-up strategy has accumulated numbers wise. So in that time frame, we've had 175,122 visitors on our pop-ups, which is the term that Optin Monster uses for clicks. So that means we've had nearly 200,000 people click through our pop-ups from January to almost June. And on top of that, our conversion rate is 8.43%, which is really actually super high for pop-ups, like double the norm or average. Now, if you're curious what the average is, the average conversion rate for pop-ups is 4% according to HubSpot. But I think if you have a tailored approach where you drip something that is related to your content and is super enticing for your target audience and you include a strong call to action, pop-ups can be super effective and super, super powerful. There are some things you don't realize are part of running an online business until you're in the thick of it and you need help to navigate through a challenge ASAP. One of the number one things I didn't realize when I got into this biz was the importance of payment recovery. That's why I started working with Gravy. Gravy offers failed payment recovery services for subscription and membership-based businesses. With a team of U.S.-based retention specialists that will contact your customers within hours after a failed payment, Gravy is going to recover the relationship and your revenue. Gravy can recover up to 80% of your revenue and get your customers back on track. And it's a great way to protect and increase that customer's lifetime value. In the last six months, Gravy has recovered over $28,000 and saved 638 customers in my business. Contact Gravy at jennalovesgravy.com to find out how to pull your failed payment data, discover best practices, even if you don't join, and compare your metrics with industry standards. And for those who do sign up, Gravy is offering 25% off your first month for their signature service, Gravy Recover. That's jennalovesgravy.com. I've always had a fully remote team, and we've refined our methods of collaboration throughout the years. From Google Docs to project management systems, we love finding new tools to help us work together even when we're far apart. So that's why I'm so excited to add Miro to our toolkit. Miro is a collaborative whiteboarding online platform created to help people visualize, discuss, and share work. You can write, draw, use video, sticky notes, diagrams, or audio to conceptualize your vision. Are you finding it difficult to collaborate outside of a traditional office? Are your current tools in your workspace not quite cutting it for you? Miro is creating a revolution in how we create and collaborate. So join the over 20 million users today. We have weekly team meetings and using Miro to list out our top priorities and map our action items for an upcoming launch really helped us all get on the same page faster. 
You can sign up and use Miro today for free. Go to Miro, that's M I R O dot com slash gold digger to start your free account. Sign up today and take advantage of three free whiteboards with this exclusive offer. Go to Miro, M I R O dot com slash gold digger and start using Miro today. There's no reason to delay. On top of pointing to additional content, invitations, or promotions, another great way to use pop-ups is to offer a discount for people who opt in. And I've seen this to be super effective for product-based businesses, especially. Like even this morning, I entered my email so that I could save money on my first purchases. One was for Coco, one was for myself. But think of how many times you opt in when you get a pop-up for free shipping or a discount on your first purchase. Like, why would you not, right? And so while pop-ups can be highly effective, one thing that I want to note is that they do require a bit of strategy and some maintenance. So what you want to avoid is a pop-up that says something super generic, like join our list or sign up for my newsletter with a basic opt-in form, because there's really no incentive with that for people to sign up. Like even if you have the coolest, greatest newsletter in the world, no one's going to know that with that type of phrasing on your pop-up. So keep your pop-ups super targeted, keep them on brand, fit them to fit both desktop and mobile, which is something we've recently redone. We had to revamp all of our campaigns to fit specifically onto mobile and make it valuable for your visitor. And what you want to do is you want to aim to include some sort of urgency or excitement that makes people excited to click and give over their email address or take that next step. Okay, the third uncommon marketing tactic is all about engagement. We focus so much on creating that a lot of times we miss the step that comes after we hit publish. So many entrepreneurs get into the content creation trap where they post and then they ghost, forgetting the power of authentic engagement. I'm talking about engaging with others thoughtfully online and going one step beyond what might be considered the norm. There are a ton of ways you can incorporate meaningful engagement into your content schedule. And what I mean by meaningful engagement, I'm talking about like getting into your DMs or your email inbox or your blog comments and responding with genuine care to the feedback and the questions from your target audience. If you have the bandwidth, respond to every message and comment people leave on your posts and make it more personal and engaging than just a mere emoji or a one word response. Sure, this is going to take some of your time, but I find that if I can set aside just 10 to 20 or 30 minutes of concentrated time a day to only respond to DMs and comments and to leave comments on other people's posts, I can respond with more attentiveness and authenticity than if I try to do it on the fly between other tasks. And I can get through a lot more messages that way than when I try to do it multitasking. I mean, How many times a day do we pick up our phone and we're just scrolling mindlessly? We're not engaging. We're not doing anything with a purpose. And so you want to really just think about like, okay, if I'm going to be on the platform anyways, I might as well be doing something positive and productive. So the thing is that I found is like we're creating for others, right? So we're so busy creating, like, why are we not responding to the people we're creating for? Like they're who we're busy creating this stuff for after all. And I know it seems like maybe a lot of work or not entirely worth it, but think about it. This one piece can shift people from being passive followers to raving fans. It totally changes the dynamic of the relationship and it helps your community feel truly valued, which they are. I often illustrate this with a point of imagine that you are having a dinner party. And all of your followers are sitting at the table. They're ready for you to serve that course. And that course is something of piece of content that you've created them. But you're so worried about getting more people to the dinner party that you're out running on the streets, shouting to anyone who can listen to come to your dinner party. While all of your people, the followers that are sitting at your table that are already there to support you are just waiting to be served. Let's focus on serving and connecting with the people that are already there. And if we do a good job with that, I promise they're going to come back and they're going to bring friends. Like, think about it. How good does it feel when you ask a question or respond to someone on social media who you don't know other than on social media and they actually take the time to respond? Like how much of a difference does it make when you can tell it's like a well thought out response and they're truly interested in you rather than just some canned response or a bunch of emojis? Like I can tell you that for me, it makes a huge difference when I can tell people respond and they genuinely care about what I have to say. 
As humans, we desire to be heard and understood. And this is one really simple but effective way to make your target audience feel heard and seen. More than that, it's a way to expand your own world and network and invite more opportunities to interact with your audience in the future. This kind of encouragement goes a long way. And as a sneaky side benefit, it shows the algorithm that you spend regular time engaging, which just might give your profile a bit of a boost. The fourth and final uncommon marketing tactic is finding new unique ways to add calls to action onto your website. So if you don't know what a call to action is, it's simply language that you use to invite people to do something. Like you're literally telling them what the next step that they can take is so that they don't have to guess on their own. So we already discussed pop-ups, but once people leave the pop-up, what ways can they further interact with you or learn more about a product or service or resource that you have? I always talk about walking through your website as though you're a visitor who's never been there before and has no idea who you are or what you do or how you serve the world. And you want to see how many steps it takes for a total unfamiliar stranger to buy from you or to get in touch with you. If you've never done what I call the mom test, then maybe it's time. Literally, watch your mom navigate your website without telling her where to click or what to do next. Like, just watch her be a user on your site. And you want to see if it's as clear and easy to use as you hoped it was. And here's the thing. It doesn't have to be your mom. You can ask any friend of yours to do this experiment and to go to your website and write down how many steps or how long it took for them to find a purchase opportunity or land onto your contact page. It may reveal gaps or help for you to see where you might be unconsciously confusing people or losing them. So on my website, we have two ways to expedite this process. The first being a screamer banner at the top of the page that usually points to our latest launch or new offer that we want to share with visitors. It's also called a hero banner, but essentially it's just a small banner section at the very top of the website with copy that calls out a feature or an offer or an invitation that we want people to see right away. And it always includes a call to action for visitors to be able to click over to wherever more details live. Of ASAP if they so desire. The other way we keep visitors on the site and help them to find something they need is with our blog footers. In each and every blog post we publish, at the bottom of the post, we always include two lines of copy with a little bit of information about a product or a resource or a freebie related to the topic of that specific blog post. Plus, we have a strong call to action with a hyperlink leading to said product, invitation, or resource. Now, a lot of times when people are just reading a blog post, they're not ready to invest or buy something, but they might want to learn more about the topic that they're reading about. For that reason, we often link not to one of our paid products, but to one of our freebies that covers a related topic that they'll likely find useful so that they can continue their education without having to pay for a thing and so that we can capture their email address within the freebie and continue serving them in their inboxes. So think about including thoughtful directions of where to go next, leaving no dead ends on your website. This is a super easy way to increase the results driven from your site and to truly lead your viewers through an experience that will make them want to come back again and to be a part of your community. So do you see what I mean here? There are so many ways to think outside of the box just a little bit and to get creative with those more baseline marketing tactics that are social media, email, and content marketing, likely things that you're already doing. With a fun quiz, direct copy, strong calls to action, plus some genuine interactions with those who want to interact with you, you'll be able to extend your reach and impact more people without a ton of extra work. These four marketing strategies aren't the norm that you'll see everyone doing everywhere, but they're some of the biggest needle movers when it comes to our website traffic and email list growth, which absolutely counts for something in my book. Remember to incorporate these ideas into your current marketing strategy and lean on the basics to guide you as you experiment just a little bit. I can't wait to see which ones you end up using and loving. Tag me on Instagram. I want to know at Gold Digger Podcast. Tell me what your favorite one is so that I can see and cheer on your progress with trying out a new marketing tactic. I'm so, so excited to see what you do. And I hope that these start to move the needle for you as well. Thank you so much for listening to another episode of the Gold Digger Podcast. Until next time, keep on digging your biggest goals. I'm over here giving you a virtual high five because you just finished another episode of the Gold Digger Podcast. 
Did that go by way too fast for anyone else? If you want more, head over to golddiggerpodcast.com for show notes and all the discount codes from today's sponsors. And if you're looking for a new crew of movers and shakers like you to bounce ideas and ask questions, be sure to join my exclusive community for gold diggers on Facebook. The link's waiting for you at golddiggerpodcast.com. 